The comedy shirt subject has really become a lost art form in recent years. Decades ago, the short two-reelers, as they were called, were the reason a lot of people went to the movie theaters to begin with. Stuff like The Three Stooges, Merry Melodies, or Laurel and Hardy. Self-contained comedies that played before the feature film, leaving a big impression without overstaying their welcome. Disney Pixar is really the only one still doing this, but even then you still have to sit through all the trailers that precede those shorts. Netflix's new comedy series, Man vs. B, oddly enough, feels really fresh for that reason. I say oddly enough because it's not particularly groundbreaking by any means. Good. The nine episode series follows a bumbling house sitter played by Rowan Atkinson. Shoo. Finding his way into one disaster after another as he faces off against a bee. It's a concept that's not complex in the slightest. And that's the aspect of it that feels really fresh. Oh, 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 oh really, really, really. <laughs> Recent comedies, especially in terms of streaming shows, seem to be getting longer and longer, with the freedom of streaming allowing them to go beyond the typical 20 to 30 minute runtime of network television. Look at something like Curb Your Enthusiasm, which in its early seasons ran about 28 minutes per episode. But now with HBO Max, most newer episodes run 30, 40, and almost 50 minutes now. A couple I... of minutes longer than you No, guys. it wasn't a couple of minutes, we've been done for five minutes. And while there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, I'm just surprised that no shows have really taken advantage of the opposite freedom that streaming provides, a show with episodes shorter than 20 minutes. Good morning, sir. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, do you mind if we get on with this? We're in a bit of a rush and I need to be quick. Okay. And no, Quibi doesn't count, as their original model was to offer their shows only on smartphones. I hold the phone as I see fit, and the creator's vision fills the screen just as they intended. Why don't I just... Ugh, he froze. So enter Man vs. B, a Netflix original with episodes around 10 to 15 minutes in length. Watching it for the first time a couple of days ago, I was surprised when each episode ended as I couldn't wait to continue, and I found that surprisingly refreshing. So I want to explore why this shorter format deserves to be embraced more, and why Man vs. B is not only a breath of fresh air, but also a return for a lost form of comedy. I guess I should start by discussing an element of this show that no one seems to be addressing. John Hughes. In the mid-90s, when the king of the teen comedy became the king of the family comedy, <laughs> Hughes developed an ambitious script simply called The Bee. The story followed a contractor wrecking havoc as he faced off against the meddlesome bee in a mansion he was renovating. Hughes met with many potential leads, including Jackie Chan, Steve Martin, and lastly Rowan Atkinson. When the Hughes-produced Baby's Day Out failed at the box office, the project was scrapped and Hughes seemed to retire. I guess the concept left an impression on Atkinson, though. Hughes doesn't get credited at all in this new show, so I'm not even sure how much of his story inspired this one, as there's a similar Mr. Bean sketch that involves a fly. <laughs> there's a few elements that feel very Hughesian here, though, such as a subplot with burglars, where have you gone? Where have you gone? I can hear you. And Trevor's goal to win the approval of his teen daughter. Regardless, it's clear that the limitlessness of streaming at least prompted Rowan to revisit this premise pitched to him decades ago by Hughes. The first time I remember a comedy streaming show really experimenting with runtimes was in 2013, for the Netflix-produced Season 4 of Arrested Development. While Seasons 1 to 3 were acclaimed for their quick pacing, this new streaming-only season allowed the show to run outside the limitations of network TV, with episodes ranging from about 28 to 40 minutes in length. Netflix, it seems, was later so embarrassed by this experiment that they recut Season 4 in 2018 to more closely match the runtime and pacing of the earlier seasons, and they then buried the original edits. Well, that's not a great sign. Seriously, if you want to watch the original Season 4 episodes now, here's how you have to find them. Yeah, the HBO's not gonna want us. What do we do now? I'm not gonna criticize Netflix for experimenting with runtimes because it was worth trying out. Especially because it seems that around that time, comedy movies in particular started getting longer and longer and longer. The problem is that a lot of those elongated runtimes didn't go to clever content as much as what felt like filmed improv sessions. 
This trend seemed to kick off around the mid-2000s with films like The 40-Year-Old Virgin, which at the time felt really fresh. But then it seemed like every comedy that came after it tried to replicate that style, bringing the average comedy movie runtime from 90 minutes to closer to two hours. Some directors and performers really excel at this humor, but that doesn't mean it needed to be in every single comedy movie. You! No! I don't want any more! Stop! That's enough! Too late! He done tagged the next guy in! Okay, so how does Man vs. B factor into all of that? Well, for starters, it's a refreshingly quiet show. And it's not even that quiet. Uh -huh. There you are. Though Rowan Atkinson is known around the world for his performance as the mostly mute Mr. Bean, his character here, named Trevor, talks quite a bit. But it's never without purpose or reason. Look out what she's seen. Oh! She's off. There she goes. That cat had better watch out. The show relies more on reactions and setup than unrestrained wordplay. While the, own, while the owners are away. It's just simple, effective dialogue that actually moves the story forward. You've never done house sitting before? No, not as such. But please don't worry, I have a house too. Well, I used to have a house. The jokes come more in the form of physical comedy. <laughs> Much like the Mr. Bean sketches, it's those simple gags that define this series. In addition to short comedy, physical comedy itself is a lost art form. And even when it is utilized today, it's mostly exaggerated and over the top. Here, Rowan sells each gag perfectly through his simple yet realistic reactions, as opposed to something like this. Wilson, stop panicking! We can disable the queen! It's making them angry, huh? Rowan's genius as a performer is that he doesn't overreact. He reacts to everything naturally in a subtle way, allowing the humor to be more organic. That's something he's just really good at. We've seen it in Mr. Bean and even the Johnny English films. Karlenka was killed today on the orders of the third. There's a theme to Mr. Bean where destruction builds gradually. It starts small, but ends grand. Oh! Oh God! Oh! Oh Jesus! God! Oh Mary, Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! It's a comedy device that's been around for decades. Laurel and Hardy called it tit for tat, where there would be an argument or misunderstanding that just kept escalating and escalating and escalating, beyond the point of rationality. But it's that detachment from reality that allows the humor to work, though. And Man vs. B does a really great job at paying tribute to that style of comedy. For instance, there's a scene where Trevor gets locked out of the house and he has to use a dog collar to get back in. Now, instead of waving the dog collar in front of the doggy door like anyone else would do, he actually puts it on. As an audience, we don't question the logic behind it because the comedy works. Comedy is probably the only genre where the absence of logic can actually make for stronger material, as opposed to recent action movies. As I touched on earlier, the show's runtime is just perfect. Not too long, not too short. It finds a balance between leaving the audience wanting more and having each episode feel self-contained enough to stop. Even the runtimes that Netflix displays are inaccurate, as a good two minutes of that runtime seems to go to credits in every language, as Netflix will wisely market this show globally. Kolstad Bergenbottom. Bergenbatten. Kolstad Bergenbatten. Again, the benefit of comedy is that it's a very universal genre. And if more streaming services embrace this type of comedy, they could sell their shows to more markets all over the world. Man vs. B is the type of show you can binge in a sitting or come back to periodically without losing much detail. Pacing-wise, it's refreshingly to the point. Go, Cupcake, go! Anyway, look, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Thanks for calling, no, bye! I the series opens with Trevor arriving at the house he'll be sitting and first encountering the bee with mayhem ensuing shortly after. Oh no. Though his character has a bit of a backstory, the show doesn't waste time setting it up at the start. Trevor is recently divorced and has been kicked out of the home he shared with his wife and daughter. But we don't get a series of forced scenes setting that up at the start. 
we get right to the concept while the show gradually reveals more details about Trevor's situation as it progresses. Blame it on a bee. Just like the evil trolley that got you sacked from Asda. Or the shredder that attacked you at the estate agent. It did attack me. And yeah, the divorced dad backstory is one of the weaker elements here, but it's necessary, mainly to set the character apart from Mr. Bean. It gives Trevor a human element that's not really present in the childlike cynicism of Mr. Bean. The quick setup reminds me a lot of the Tom and Jerry or the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote shorts. Keyword there, shorts. We never really needed to know the motivation of Wile E. Coyote beyond the fact that he just wanted to catch that Roadrunner. It's that simplicity that's helped those characters appeal to generations of audiences. Man vs. Bee proves that comedy can still be simple to be effective, and that this type of short never went out of style. It just got kind of sadly forgotten. Bad. The plot is literally a man trying to kill a bee, but the writers and Rowan find stunningly effective ways to carry that premise. It's not perfect, and I'll be the first to admit that, but it's a refreshing experiment that I would love to see more streaming shows emulate. So check out Man vs. Bee, and maybe it will encourage Netflix to put out more content like it.